Well, today the plan is to try to sight this rifle in. Um, I was wanting to do a comparison uh, in in this laser in a laser bore the laser bore sight uh, that I have here. Um, the problem is it doesn't fit really well with the bolt action. I can't close it completely. Um, and each time I put it in the gun, uh, I get a little something different coming out the end of the barrel. However, it does seem to be within a five inch circle around the crosshairs each time. So I'm not going to make any adjustments. My plan was to uh, adjust the crosshairs to the laser, but since it gives me something different every time I put it in there, I'm not going to do that. But it's close. I mean, each time I put it in there, it, what it's telling me is that I should be on the paper. And all I've done is mount the scope on the gun. I should be on the paper. So, and that's at 50 yards which is what I want to sight this gun in at. So that was the plan was to set the scope to the laser, fire off a shot and see uh, where we hit. But since it varies so much each time I put it in there, I'm just, I'm gonna uh, say that it's showing me a five inch circle around the crosshairs and we're just gonna leave the scope alone rather than do all that adjusted and then taking it back to zero and then readjusting it again. So we'll see where it hits with the first shot. Then I'm going to take the bolt out and I'm going to look down the bore and see if it's on the paper, if it's hitting where the laser says it is, that's going to be so close looking through the bore you probably won't be able to determine that five inches. Um, so if that's the case, I'll put the bolt back in. I'm going to put uh, the crosshairs back on the center of the target and I'm going to adjust to my bullet hole. So that, that's the plan. That's how I plan to do this. And what I want to attempt to do is to sight this thing in at an uh, inch and a half high at uh, 50 yards. Because if I thought the ballistics were on here, I'll have to, I don't remember where, I, I looked them up somewhere. I thought they were on the box. They usually are. But, I don't see it on here. But I do, but I remember what it is. I want to sight the gun in an inch and a half high. I better look because it may be two and a half. In fact, I think it is two and a half inches high. Two and a half inches high at 50 yards gives you zero at 150. And I forget, it's just a few low at uh, 200. Um, so basically on a deer, you could actually, you know, if you're going for a broadside shot just behind the shoulder, you could you could hold dead on 200 and under and you should kill your deer so we'll see we're going to see how this turns out so keep watching and we'll we'll see what happens Alright, that's the shot we're going to take. I'm going to take this tactic cam off of here.
so I can make this shot because with it jacked up on full power, which is the way you should sight in, I uh, I have to get so close on it, and I have a feeling this gun's going to have a little bit of a punch to it. It's three inch slug, so I'm going to take the tactic cam off, but you'll be able to see where I have it sighted right there. That is pretty doggone close for a first shot. Right there is where we hit. Right there is where we hit. Center of target. <laughs> oh, my land living. There's the second shot right there. People, that is the way it's supposed to work. Two shots and we're zero. However, I want to bring it up. I want to bring my point of impact up to about two and a half inches at 50 yards. So, Alright, so I'm putting the crosshairs back on zero. That's the beauty of having a, a gun vise or a rest that you can keep the gun rock solid on. Because you can do this method. I mean, that's two shots and I'm sighted in. I mean, to zero. I'm dead center, almost dead center on that target down there with two shots with a slug gun. But I want it two and a half inches high at 50 yards. So I'm sitting on zero now. And so what I'll do is I'll dial my crosshairs down two and a half inches. Right there.
Okay, so as you can see, here was my first shot. Now that laser bore put me somewhere in that same circle every time I looked at it. So that was the first shot. I put my crosshairs back here and adjusted the crosshairs to the bullet hole. There's my second shot. That's some people call that the one shot method. I don't know anybody that shoots a gun and sights it in with just one shot. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of them out there that are good enough to do that. I don't trust it that good. It was just one shot. So there was my first adjustment. And that's where it put me. So I made another adjustment because I want this gun to shoot two and a half inches high at 50 yards. Two and a half inches is right here. Right in this circle right here. Inside this circle. I came up here and checked it with the tape measure. So I've got maybe a two and a half inch group here. Now, I made a couple of minor adjustments. I probably shouldn't have bothered. Um, I probably shouldn't have even bothered with that. And, and, and more than likely before deer season opens, I'll come down here with the gun cold again and try it again because it might make, make one, one or two click adjustment on it. But but that's that's pretty darn impressive for a slug gun. I mean, that was the first shot. Put the crosshairs back on the center of the target, adjusted the scope, the crosshairs to the bullet hole. And that was my second shot. So when they tell you that that Model 220 is an accurate slug gun with these Remington AccuTip slugs, they're not lying. That's pretty darn impressive, I think. Uh, that's two and a half inches. That's a two and a half inch group right there at 50 yards. Um, so that should put me dead zero at 150. Um, that's pretty impressive for a slug gun. So, anyway. I'm not going to shoot it anymore today. That's, that's $5 a round right there. I put seven rounds through it. So all in all, I'm quite satisfied with the gun. This, uh, I think it's going to be an awesome deer gun. Um, like I say, I will probably put a couple more rounds through it between now and deer season. Uh, but that's, that's pretty impressive for a slug gun. Every one, I've never, I've got several. Uh, I've got a Remington, I've got a, a Mossberg, and I bought a, I don't even remember the name of the gun. I bought, I've sold that gun to my buddy Hatch. And I've killed deer with every one of them. I mean, they were accurate enough to kill deer. If you're taking a broadside shot on a deer, any of that, he's a dead deer. So, I appreciate you watching the video. I uh, hope you got something out of it. Uh, if nothing else, I hope it convinces you that that, that uh, Savage Model 220 is an accurate slug gun with the Remington AccuTips. Those are the three, inches, three inch ones that I'm shooting. And so, uh, I think that's uh, pretty accurate. So, I appreciate you watching the video and uh, if, you, if, you're, if it's not too much trouble, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. If you are subscribed, uh, it'd be great if you'd hit the like button and maybe share the video with somebody. Uh, it really helped me with YouTube a little bit, I think. Uh, they don't, they're not real crazy about our type of content, but if we keep being positive about it, keep getting a lot of positive response from everyone, 
uh, I think it'll go a long ways towards uh, keeping us on the platform and keeping us in YouTube's favor at least a little bit so uh, I'm gonna have a couple more videos coming up pretty soon uh, I have a Mossberg Model 935 turkey gun turkey season is coming up in about two weeks so I haven't shot it yet and so I'm gonna have it down here uh, I don't know I may do it tomorrow or maybe next weekend uh, I'm gonna bring that gun down and and I've got a little scope on it don't know if I'm gonna like a scope on the shotgun or not but we'll see the whole idea of putting the scope on a shotgun was to be able to film through the scope that was that was the only reason so well, I'll just have to see how I like it because that's a three and a half inch magnum shotgun and uh, I expect it's gonna have a nice punch um, I, if you noticed I was taking the tactic cam on and off of the uh, scope while I was shooting this gun uh, and the reason for that is because it puts your scope about this much closer to your eye and when I'm shooting that scope I got it dialed all the way up to the highest power which is the way you want to sight in and that's a 16 power scope so you got you got to get up a little bit closer on it to, to get centered get your sight picture centered and uh, the closer you get to it the more likely you are you are to get whopped because <laughs> it's got a whop to it and so uh, that's the reason I was taking it on and off uh, but in a normal posi shooting position and everything I think it'll be all right I think I'll be able to film through the scope with that gun okay uh, it's got a, it's got a generous eye relief on it it's just it's sitting on the bench it's a completely different situation getting up behind it than it is holding the gun uh, and taking a shot so we'll see how it goes with the turkey gun and what kind of pattern we get with it and whether we can whether we like the scope or not so stay tuned keep 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 tuned to the channel and that one will be coming out pretty soon and hopefully we'll have some turkey hunting videos out here very soon so y'all keep watching i appreciate it and there you go